Thank you. Good morning. Laurie Fitzgerald. David J. Brilli here. We're here to talk today about Administration Development Corporations Act. Let me start with the, um, the types of, of corporate insolvencies. So the predominant types of corporate insolvency are receiverships controlled by a secure creditor, mortgage in possession, similar process. Schemes of arrangement are still there in, in their legal uh, framework, uh, but rarely used, essentially been replaced by the administration of company range of process since 1993. Administrations, which we've discussed today, account for about 15% of all corporate insolvencies. Liquidations, there's two primary types of liquidations, solvent, what we call members voluntary liquidations, which are just generally company cleanups, and insolvent, which are creditors voluntary liquidations through the court or provisional liquidator. And the other one, part, DJ? We do have the small business restructuring regime, which recently came into effect as of 2020 in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I, I suppose the initial take up, Laurie, has been very slow, but it has started to gather some momentum uh, in recent times. Um, I suppose, well, essentially, uh, a company needs to have less than 1 million in debts to be eligible. Uh, so in every single scenario of these, essentially the ATO is key uh, so having their support is obviously primary to having a successful SBR in any situation. Thank you, DJ. So two administrations, commonly called voluntary administration, but that's more a, a practice word. The, the word doesn't actually appear in the Corporations Act. But the, the, the critical start, place to start is the object of an administration. So, and this is to quote the Corporations Act because it's relevant in terms of what it's supposed to be. So the object is to provide for the business property and affairs of an insolvent to be administered, insolvent company to be administered, to maximise the chances of continuing in existence, or, if that's not possible, to result in a better outcome than creditors will otherwise receive in a winding up. Um, in some aspects, aspects, it's similar to the USA Bankruptcy Chapter 11. Two key differences in the, the Australian model, uh, director's powers are frozen, and there's no, no general requirement for administrators to go to court. There are certain circumstances and nuances where you do go to court. The US system is heavily court managed and controlled. Um, how a company gets to administration? Uh, commonly by, or the most common is by the board of the company. So the board re resolves to appoint an administrator and it is that simple. The board, the resolution generally reads, the company is or is likely to become insolvent and therefore the, the board resolves to place the company into administration. That happens, administrator appointed, everything changes, we'll come to that. A liquidator of the company may, a liquidator may appoint an administrator if the company's in a liquidation for reasons of proposed restructuring, they might move down a path of an administrator, or a secure creditor, a secure creditor where they hold an all pap uh, security over all or predominantly all of the assets of the company uh, may appoint an administrator. Uh, but the most common certainly is the board itself. The effects of the administration, the, the, the first issue is a, is a moratorium, a freezing order against any actions against the company. Um, the administrator takes control, has significant powers, and we'll come to those in a moment. The director's powers are suspended. Um, they still have obligations, indeed they have obligations to report and assist the administrator, uh, but their power of, of contracting the company or, or dealing with the assets of the business uh, are frozen. Secure creditors, um, there's two types of secure creditors, of course. There's those with an all-pap, security covering all of the assets, or a PIMSI where they have specific security over, over individual assets. They, they certainly retain some of their rights. Secure creditor can um, appoint their own uh, appoint a receiver. Uh, secure, and secure creditor over, and creditors over individual assets may, in certain, certain circumstances, um, take possession of those assets, depending on, on the asset class and what, what they're doing. They're, the first requirement of administrators is to, to have a meeting of creditors within eight business days. Um, not much can happen, only essentially two things. <clears throat> the creditors can move to replace the administrator. They can't take the company out of administration, but they can change the administrator. And they can also form a committee of, uh, to, to assist and advise the administrator. The administrator then goes ahead and, and prepares a report for all creditors, uh, covering the, the, the history background of the company and options and outcome of where it might go to. It's quite a comprehensive document and a second meeting of the company is convened within five weeks of the initial administration process. The report is indeed quite fulsome. Um, it's extensive in terms of the history affairs of the company, 
uh, looks at actions that may be taken if the company's the open liquidation. Uh, and the administrator is required to, to speculate on, on what the outcome might be of an administration or a deed or liquidation and enable creditors to make an informed judgment. There's three outcomes at that second meeting of creditors, three possible outcomes. The company can enter into a deed of company arrangement, sort of a scheme or arrangement um, that can allow the company to continue. It can be placed into liquidation or that it can be returned to the director's control. Um, I've been in trouble for saying this before. I've never seen it happen. Very, very rare that it would happen, but it could happen. Uh, it is a possibility. And, and of course, also, but it's not an option, but it is an option to an extension of time can be taken um, at that meeting. If uh, it's decided that further work or, or options need to be considered, um, creditors can resolve to extend the time or indeed application to court can be made to extend the timetable. On uh, the, the administrator themselves, in terms of the power and authority they have to, to do things, um, on administration, the moratorium takes effect, touched on that, and some of the powers, we won't go to them all, that the administrator does have, um, they have all the powers that the company previously had and its offices. So they, they can close the business, they can sell parts of it, uh, they can borrow to trade on the business, uh, they can continue trading or stop trading, um, and, and they're, they're all judges they need to make having regard to the, the, the outcomes and where things go to. They can appoint new directors, um, they can issue shares, it's power under a data company arrangement. They can issue shares if they need to, and, and that's why often administrations will involve shareholders, uh, which is different to, to other forms of insolvency. Um, when the deed passes, if there's a deed, it binds all creditors, um, whether they vote for it or not, which on the basis passed. Um, but there's a carve out for secure creditors. Secure creditors are obviously not going to be bound unless they agree to. There's a requirement to investigate the company's affairs and, and financial circumstances, and that, that's touched on in the, um, the, the, the administrator's report. Access to the company's records is critical and, and, and it's available, even where a lien is claimed against the, uh, on the basis of debts owed. And as a fallback, administrators have a right under section 447A to apply to court um, to seek such orders as they may think appropriate or that, that the court may consider appropriate. Suppose that makes administration very flexible, Laurie, for the administrator. And Indeed, it is. And, and we'll, we'll touch on a few examples now and uh, run through a couple of these. And, uh, and these are recent matters we've been involved in. Valence, we'll start with that. Uh, a graphite mine in, based in South Australia, ASX listed company. The base of the administration was to, to enable a restructure of the, of the balance sheet and the operations of the business whilst maintaining care and maintenance of, of the, the, the site. It was, a, it was an old graphite mine required considerable capex um, and over time it had run into disrepair it was sort of hamstrung by its, by its history and, and, and progress and, and need for significant spend. So the, the upside was seen as enormous um, and the, the prospects in particular with rare, rare minerals uh, was seen it was a great option. Australia is a, a producer of graphite um, but the market's dominated offshore but there's certainly significant resources in and around this mine. The, the mine site required new facilities. The shareholders um, were not in concert. There was different splinter groups within the shareholders and, and, and had been battles for control. So the administration enabled a moratorium to start with um, to, to, to freeze things, give us an opportunity to clean up the balance sheet and took, us, took the opportunity as well to look at whether we should just wrap this up and sell it. And, and it was one of the things canvassed with the, the board and, and the shareholders saying, look, if, uh, if there's a, a better outcome to move this on to a new owner. Uh, let's, let's look at it. Ultimately, it's determined the best approach was to retain the current structure, recapitalize it, protect the resource, and, and seek new investments. And that was to be done through a deed of company arrangement. So we went down that proposal, and, and this, this did take some time, it was a complex matter. But ultimately, the deed proposal was that employees were paid in full. The, the tenements, which was critical to maintain and protect those tenements, were protected. Um, existing creditors were converted to equity and invest existing creditors were a lot of local suppliers as well as um, loans that have come into the company and, and, and we, we need to bring them on and, and continue with it but um, that, that was certainly a, a, a difficult process getting people to accept that they were becoming shareholders in the business. Um, new funding needed to come in, a new board was installed and, and a broader deeper board with more expertise. Um, existing shareholders were watered down as a result. Um, that required an extraordinary general meeting. 
to enable the docker to proceed. Um, and we also have uh, required ASX and ASIC approvals. And what, one of the hiccups we did have in this was, um, to go back to a comment I made earlier about the shareholders, one significant shareholder um, didn't want to participate and actually took action through the takeovers panel seeking to, to, to stop the process. Um, so we, we worked through that. Ultimately, though, with the, uh, with the, the takeovers panel uh, support and acquiescence of ASX and ASIC and the creditors generally, we also got majority shareholder approval um, and, and, and mining tenants were protected and successfully got the data company arrangement through. Company's been restored to the ASX and last I saw was seeking um, funding for the expansion of a new plant, which is happening right now. So turnaround story, Laurie. Um, I will touch on another example, a recent example from our time uh, by the name of Keach Foundry. So Keach Foundry was a long established and regional city based foundry supplying the mining industry with all sorts of knickknacks. Um, I suppose that it can be used in the mining process. They moulded and casted uh, these knickknacks and essentially they were the major supplier to a, a lot of companies out in WA. Um, so essentially when we were brought in, a number of, there were a number of business and operational challenges that the, the entity was facing. For example, we had a, a large workforce which didn't really have a, a solid leadership or lack of di or direction, I suppose. The culture was quite weak having had just been taken over recently by uh, uh, some third parties. Uh, there was also a severe lack of recent capex and that was displayed in essentially the processes which were quite outdated and um, old school we might say. Um, having said that, the company did have significant uh, customer support, uh, obviously by being regional based. Uh, there was quite a bit of overwhelming support out in the, in, in the township for, for the entity given it, it provided so many jobs um, throughout the town. Uh, however, obviously the company had sort of become a price taker rather than a setter and that had affected its bottom line. I touched a little bit on the outdated systems, but um, essentially this was a, a long-term tale of decline. It, it had been going on for years and years and it, it, it reached a boiling point. So opportunity, there was opportunity uh, to restructure the entity given there was that ongoing key customer support. Um, and initially we were engaged in, uh, as administrators to uh, conduct a full review of the operations, taking a look at uh, what the trading outlook might look like and abs uh, actually stabilising that workforce given there was supposedly uh, over 100 people working with the, with the company at the time. Um, part of that was also to seek uh, customer support and see whether there was any appetite for those customers to keep working with the company. So essentially we determined uh, a restructuring or reinvestment recapitalization plan. Um, we did need some, some extra time to do this. So we sought an extension of the administration period with the consent of the creditors. Um, and this gave us a bit more breathing room to, to actually explore options for either the recapitalization or the sale of the, of the business to, to a third party. Um, ultimately, we, we ended up brokering a deal uh, with an experienced industry player um, who was willing to take on the risk of trading the business um, within the, the, the sort of capsule of the administration until we could settle a final sale because obviously settling a, a business sale does take a number of weeks. In this case, it took 10 weeks and there's obviously a DD process to go through before anyone's going to take on that substantial risk. Uh, the company, one of the major sticking points we had was that the company had substantial employee entitlements, um, which essentially would crystallise uh, should the company enter liquidation and close down and, and not survive. Um, like I said, there was over 100 to 150 employees and a lot of them were, were long-term employees with substantial sort of redundancy and, and payment in lieu um, entitlements which had accrued over years and years. So we did uh, end up getting through that DD process successfully. We were able to have our purchaser um, take on that shortfall risk um, with regards to the assets uh, and the entitlements, which did well exceed what the, the sort of realizable value of the assets was. Um, essentially, there wasn't any return to trade creditors in this instance, but um, each of the employees were, uh, or those who were, were willing to consent, were taken over to a new entity, managed to retain all their employee entitlements, which was a great result in the first instance. Um, there was more shareholder uh, investment and there was debt absorbed by those previous shareholders, so they were willing to cut ties with what they had previously put into the business. And essentially, although trade creditors weren't getting a, 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 a return at all, essentially, um, there was that overwhelming support for the business 
uh, being a regional town. So many of its suppliers and customers were willing to keep uh, sort of continuing to, to deal with, with the entity on the basis that there was uh, some light at the end of the tunnel and some ongoing supply to be had. Uh, the business or, or the company itself did enter liquidation and, and that remains sort of an ongoing issue, but essentially we were able to salvage the business and, and its employees and save the workforce of around 100 to 120 people, which was an excellent result in the end. I think DJ, it was a, a harping on it, a regional provider in excess of 100 jobs and the trade creditors, as, as, as DJ touched on, were not owed significant money, um, so they were, they were agreeable to for letting things go through because they, they saw the upside of a, a decade old business continuing and is still continuing today and its future looks quite bright. As we touched on, it had, a, um, it had great fundaments there in terms of heavy support of customers. It really just needed to get its pricing right and get profitable. And I believe that they've achieved that. That's what the administration reset, I suppose, can do for a company, Laurie. Thank you. So the, the final one we'll touch on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is Wellness Group, an ASX listed skincare beauty product um, operation. Blue chip investor base, uh, but really struggling for revenue. Had had brought a number of businesses, had acquired over time, um, but was struggling to to to, to get the the systems right and the and the balance of those operations. It's a crowded market, um, but when you when you get these sort of operations right, it's exceptional returns can be had. Um, cost of products can be wound down to very low. If you get a, a good solid brand running, um, then the returns and you, just, you know that in the household brands out there that um, seems to really take off. Number of problems facing them, weak revenue, um, had, had survived to date for a number of years on equity support whilst trying to build its brands and market share. Um, shareholder fatigue had kicked in and, it, and loans, had, fixed loans had come in from, from shareholders but seeking to be debt rather than equity because they're concerned for, for returns. Uh, and uh, yeah, unprofitable subsidiaries had, as I touched on, a number of companies been added on, <coughs> and at this stage, none of them are generating enough to, to cover the overall operation. So the administration was was spec to provide a, 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 again a, a recapitalise or sell option. So what's this thing look like? Um, can we wrap it up and move it on, or does the does the current base want to have, it, not have another chance to to, to do it? So there's certainly value there in the ASX listing. Um, that, that, that gives it a, a broad supporter base and gives shareholders some future in terms of what might happen. Um, there need to be a lot of, of products, excess products being added on, added on that weren't working, which were still sucking up cash. Um, they, they had a salon business on the side, um, and, and that was just simply it become too expensive to run and, and was riddled with a lot of, a, uh, a lot, a lot of finance products and, and, and systems in there. Um, so the most interest was in trying to relaunch this thing, wrap it up, tie it up, and see if we can't kick it off into something better and, and brighter. So the administration was process was used to to explore investors, trade sales, recapitalise, really through the net very wide to see what, what can happen. Um, we had a number of false starts, and DJ and I took some some months to get to this. We, we, we thought of um, curtains a few times in terms of the process because we just weren't getting enough grip. Um, but we had behind us a secure creditor that was keen for it still to, to get somewhere if, if indeed they could. And not so much keen on a return, was, was, was still keen for, for the business to, to, to come back out of this. Um, so we got the support ultimately for, from for a dental company arrangement with a new complementary operation, so no, no previous direct relations or, or connections, um, but a similar type business looking to, to, to take the better parts of wellness group. And, and relaunch themselves. So the, the process was creditors were again to receive equity um, in lieu of debt. The, the subsidiaries we, we got rid of, you know, cut those off and, and, and tidied them up, which did generate some cash flow to go back up to the top of the group and, and enable the, the, the future to be slightly brighter at some source of revenue, revenue of equity in fact. The, the transfer of products and licenses was, was critical because we needed to maintain uh, the, the existence of the previous business to, to enable ASIC and ASIC support um, to retain the, the ASIC listing, which is important for shareholders generally. The key investors remain supportive, which, which was critical in the process. It did take some months and, and a lot of negotiations with, with the new parties who were, and, and the guys coming in to take control 
whilst they, they, they were good in their space, uh, they'd not previously tried something like this. Um, so the, the directors of the head company ultimately achieved the deed of company arrangement. Um, that, that, that was useful in terms of protecting those involved in the history of the part from the liquidations. The subsidiaries being liquidated didn't matter so much because they were small and isolated and with limited exposure, but the, but the major overall company to be protected. So it was remorphed. It certainly changed its name and, and, and back on um, and, and back out there still at this stage trying to, to achieve the, the, um, the goal of, of establishing good, long-term, successful products and we wish them the best. Just to recap on the administration, so it is just one form of corporate insolvency, but it certainly is, is broader in scope and, and gives us a, a lot of um, options and opportunities. And you know, I don't know if I've emphasised it enough, it, it's certainly very broad in how you can use it, what things can do, issue shares, change boards, sell business, bring businesses in, uh, bring in new debt, yeah, a lot of things can be done. Um, they provide for restructuring business, shareholders, trading, those things. They're quick to initiate um, and the administrator themselves has significant powers. To be successful, they will require um, a, a change. Um, fundamentally, a company's got to administration because something hasn't worked. And you need something to, to, to shake up and change it, at least in a, a reasonable part. You might not change everything, but you change a fair portion of the business. You've got to balance the success of a surviving business against creditors wanting a return on, on, on their debt. I mean, they, they didn't invest in these things. They, they lent money in, in all um, honest purpose of trading to get paid. And then they met with an option of saying, uh, we can't pay you, but um, then you've got to balance that up. Uh, are you better to go down the liquidation process and get creditors paid, or will they get more out of a surviving, surviving business? And that's, that's always going to be an individual discussion. You need to work with all stakeholders, that's, that's critical. Um, it'll often involve shareholders where other forms of corporate insolvency will not. Um, they have little or no regard to shareholders. You know, shareholders are the last people to, to, bo to be bothered with. They can provide to protect critical licenses, IP, contracts, etc. cetera. Um, there are certain protections of the Corporations Act now for, for contracts, but uh, they're, they're matters you need to be careful for. And, and that's often why you use an administration because you want the entity and the structure to remain rather than changing or selling something and seeking third party approval for this. Um, and, and you may have cap uh, avenues still for recapitalization on the, the stock exchange if they're public companies uh, where it's justified and reasonable. Thank you. Let's move now, TJ, to a, a short quiz. Yes, we will, Laurie. So I'm going to uh, ask the questions today and let you give me the fulsome answers for our audience. Certainly. Firstly, who can place a company into administration? Is it A, the employees, B, the creditors, C, any director, D, the board, or E, all of the above? The correct answer is D, the board. Um, not, no one director can do it. Uh, creditors don't actually have a power to initiate an administration unless they're a secure creditor, and employees are, in a sense, in essence, another creditor. Uh, Excellent. All right, second question. What can an administrator not do? Note the uh, double negative. Sack the board, A. B, sell the business. C, refinance the business. Or D, disclaim an onerous contract or property. Thank you, DJ. Look, it's, it's a slightly nuanced one, as I say, that administrator has a lot of powers um, and they can sack boards, they can sell business, they can close business. Um, it's, it's a quirky one, but a liquidator has a power to disclaim onerous contracts and properties. It's not actually a power given to an administrator. Uh, it's a specific power for a liquidator when they're appointed to say that's an on onerous contract. We can simply walk away from it. It might be um, contaminated land or, or, or some such process. Uh, administrators don't have that same power. Does save you from getting yourself in a pot of hot water when you don't know what's coming, Laurie. So that's a good option. Now, question three, the final question. An administration can come to an end by either A, order of the court, B, creditors voting to end it, C, company failing into falling into liquidation, sorry, D, company entering into a docker, E, all of the above, or F, none of the above. That's quite a Awesome, uh, multiple choice, Laurie. <laughs> it is, and, and they're all relevant, and we, we put it there because it's worth considering and what what is the end of an administration. Um, and certainly, courts can always bring things to an end, so that, that's, a, that's obviously a true one. Creditors can vote to end administration. Uh, company can, the company can fall into liquidation by, by 
defaulting on administration or exceeding its timetable or a number of other issues. Or if indeed it enters into a deed of company arrangement, it will automatically bring the liquidation to conclusion. Um, I go further, there are some nuances about that, but generally um, the administration ends by, by deed of company arrangement. And the two most common, of course, are C and D. It either goes with deed of company arrangement or it goes to liquidation. Um, so it is E, all of the above. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, well, everybody. Laurie, that's uh, it for today. So thanks, everyone, for uh, listening in, and hope we hope we've gotten something out of voluntary administrations. Thanks very much.